Hi, welcome back to Camp K9. This is Tony Twist. Now, um, it's been a weird year, hasn't it? Any of you gardeners out there may have noticed that the weather has not been what we have been used to over the last few years. And it's resulted in um, a lot of mayhem in the gardens. So, I have been, had a rather busy summer, I have to say. And after being so dedicated to planting my seeds in the spring and growing them into little seedlings and putting them out in the garden, I have to say, I pretty much then deserted my garden and had to go into work 100% because it was just so crazy busy. So, um, it turned into a bit of a jungle, I have to say. And many of you will probably have been struggling with the blight, with the tomatoes. So by the time I got back into the garden again, I was actually just ripping out to, uh, peas that had gone too far and tomatoes that had gone to blight. Tomatoes, tomatoes. Anyway, I'm glad to say that not all of my tomatoes got lost to blight. So, let's have a look at what we did manage to save um, the crimson crush this tomato i have to say survived the blight i was very very pleased i've got the sprinkler <laughs> watering can uh, sprinkler on watering hose sprinkler on doing some watering for me before the heat wave we're just about to hit let me get you those water droplets right wonderful here's another crimson crush that we put over in this corner of the garden so you can see that's a beautiful tomato that is just coming up we have had a couple off of them so as normal i planted numerous tomato plants around the garden and most of them wherever you can see bare soil is basically where i had to pull them up um because they they got taken by blight but i'm pleased to say we have a couple of tomatoes out here tomato plants out here the one over there and the one over there that survived i'm also pleased to say that in here where i neglected everything the chard from last year went crazy and filled the entire area um bolting and going to seed because it didn't have any water in there but the tomatoes survived. This was meant to be my melon tunnel this year. And none of the melons actually came up with anything. There is a melon plant there, which has got no melons on it. Um, I think there might be a melon plant in there somewhere, but the nasturtium looks to have taken over. Uh, this was a loofah going up here, which may have attempted something oh there's a melon that is growing but hasn't actually got oh it's got a little something on the back there um but i'm not gonna hold my breath i haven't spent any time in here so where is it so this tomato plant here i just bunged in this corner when it was obvious that there were no melons going to be coming out of this um tunnel Anything that was near to the end got blight, but the rest of this survived, I'm pleased to say. And there's another tomato plant. Look at the size of that. That's beautiful. And look, some lovely red cherries coming out on this one. On this side, it looks like most of them have been taken by blight. It must have been the angle of the rain. But I might be able to grab some green ones off of there before I lose them completely. So hopefully that's going to be great for some green fried tomatoes but look at that i'm pleased with that one and i can't wait to put those red cherries in my mouth well this was my current and berry cage for this year and the cage worked we had a few bits out of here but i haven't really come out here to be able to harvest anything um the raspberries seem to be growing out the top as as do the leek flowers and I think maybe yes look at that carrot flowers from the year before last uh 
there are some red currants and some black currants left back there looks like there may be some blueberries in there as well just i can see one there so probably deep inside there there might be some more don't know about the blackberries that would be up the end here i'm sure they'll see but over at the land we have tons of blackberries so we'll be fine there this is the cornfield cornfield it's like that far across and that far long but we call it the cornfield and that's growing well so the corn here is coming look at that better than last year i've got two cobs on each one rather than one which is good oh some of them have only got one but hey ho the beans i don't think i'm going to get into many of these beans these ones i can get to here but each one of these stalks was planted with a bean uh and I won't be able to get to the ones in the middle but the beans will be putting nitrogen back into the soil which is what their main job is for anyway and any that i manage to grab great beneficial for next year maybe i'll grab some seeds off of them as well for planting next year i didn't think the squash were going to make it all of my squash did really bad this year but it looks like some of these squash have finally decided that they're going to grow look at that got a whole bunch of squash coming along here at the back. They obviously like this spot. The bees are busy. So let's hope we get some decent um, squash off of here. At the moment, everything seems to be a male flower, which is very frustrating, <laughs> isn't it? I'm sure we've all gone through that, haven't we? We've all gone through that, oh great, loads of flowers, and then they're all male flowers and we don't get any fruit off of them. I've just spotted a fruit down here. There we go. I don't know which squash that is. I bunged a load of different ones in. And look, there as well. So, fingers crossed we get some decent squash. Oh, that looks like butternut. Deep in there. Can you see that? There we go. So yeah, actually, I think we might do well. This was the lasagna bed, if you remember um, me showing you when we were building it earlier on in the year. So this is compost and chicken manure and goat manure and um, five-year-old dog poo, you name it. Anything we had that could go into this bed, went into this bed and then was topped with some soil and some wood chips to keep everything inside nice and moist and it looks like it didn't do too badly there were some potatoes planted on the edges um which i haven't got around to digging up so i can still see a few potato leaves there uh i'll get around to it we've got other potatoes in other places hello chooks so those guys there are all busy on this is my compost heap here this is where all the compost goes and the chickens turn it into nice compost for planting things in next year and these guys are my guinea fowl these are my little chicks so these two hens are raising these chicks for me and they're hopefully going to take care of loads of the ticks over at the land so as we come back here this is probably a good angle to to get the sweet potato wall so i've got tubs all the way along here and tubs all the way along here two half barrels there and the arch going over and that's got all of my sweet potatoes growing in it so that's not doing too badly i will know obviously later in the year when i just when i dig them up and find out how many they produced this vine i thought this had died and i just popped this plant pot here to block the the hole into the um in, onto the lawn which i was trying to grow but then the chickens decided to disintegrate um i thought this had died but look at it it's coming back i'm gonna have to plant that somewhere before it decides it's going to climb up my willow tree now here look at this who's got this growing in their garden this is um tree spinach and i didn't plant this and it's growing everywhere here 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 uh in the high in the tunnel 
I'm sure you saw it at the back there, see? It's growing everywhere and I try every year to plant spinach to eat and it normally bolts on me. Well, I can tell you something, this is extremely hardy and it's doing really, really well and it's growing all on its own and that's what I like. I like light, nice, free, easy food. Looking at the little, <laughs> thank you, Ronnie, uh, fruit trees. We had some plums for the first time off the plum tree here. They were delicious. The fig tree yet again did not provide any figs for us this year. I think I've got the wrong variety or something. The medlar, well, that is growing again. And I still don't know how to process these medlars or for the size of the tree, whether I have the patience for it, but let's see, we might do this year. The cherry tree is pretty much a goner. I know it's not gone completely, but the aphids got on this earlier on in the year and it just didn't recover. I'm really sad to say. Right, should we go into the main vegetable garden? So, just as we enter, we've got the arch going over here. Now, just excuse this, this is the hose feeding the water at the moment. Now, earlier on in the year, we had peas growing over that arch. And normally by this time, the peas would have gone and the trombocino squash would be well and truly over that and producing plenty of squash. But just like all the other squash plants, it's really, really taking its time this year. It hasn't reached halfway up. See, we do have our first trombocino on there, I'm pleased to say, but I have a feeling we won't reach any of the four footed long ones that we had the year before. The one that was meant to be growing up on that side completely failed and Patty Pan should have been growing out the bottom of both of these and nothing. Um, that one completely failed again, so clearly, stuff doesn't like to grow on this side for some reason. I do have a squash growing here and a squash growing here but very very poorly. On this side it's a, the story's a bit different. We have a nice patty pan bush here but yet to see any fruit and on this side this is the trombocino that I told that I pointed out from the other side. It's looking very weak but it is growing so what else can I show you on this side? Oh yes, let's stand back and just admire the sunflowers. So I thought they were gonna die when they were down this size and they have grown all the way up here. Just look at that beautiful flower. And it's not the only tall ones. Look over here. This is my beanstalk area. So what I had is I have some um, bamboo canes that come up in a pyramid here and at the end here and one in the middle. You can't really see them anymore because also I planted the sunflowers along there and the sunflowers look at the size of these have taken over being part of the beanstalks as well as i said i've not been out here doing any form of harvesting so the beans i'm pleased to say are doing extremely well we have various different types this is this you recognize as your regular sort of runner bean um i forget this variety snake snake something I can't remember oh my goodness it's been a long long summer and then we've got some lovely purple ones here I like the purple ones because I can see them for picking them they're far more obvious and they're climbing up the sunflowers just as much as they're climbing up the pyramids but they don't stop there we have them growing over this archway here as well I want to say they're called snake tongues I don't know why 
Um, but here we go. There's some regular beans there. And then over this side, we've got some beautiful purple ones. Look at them hanging there. I really must get out of here and do some harvesting. That's really good. This was meant to be my aubergine and cucumber bed. And I have to say, we got one aubergine this big from it. And I've had two or three cucumbers off this cucumber plant at the back here. And in here, we've got lemon cukes growing. Here we go, here's one. I've had two off of here. That one's ready to be harvested. And hopefully we may have some more in the bottom of there, but who knows? But these aubergine plants, nope. I just, uh, there was, I think there was too many nasturtium in here. But saying there was too many nasturtium in here, everything was doing things at different times of the year this year. So, the nasturtium are now doing their job. As you can see, we have our little pruners in and they are busy pruning back the nasturtium. Now, normally they've done the nasturtium by now. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Look how well they've done a job there. The nasturtium are also doing a really great job because they're keeping the caterpillars off of my cucumbers because otherwise they would be eating my cucumbers to pieces and they're not eating my cucumbers they're leaving my cucumbers alone and they are going for the nasturtium which is absolutely wonderful I, aren't these flowers on these beans absolutely gorgeous now this is not a bean this is a cucurbit and they are growing all over. They are very prolific and I do love the cucurbits. Uh, let's see, you can see over here there is a cucurbit growing. There we go, look. There is a cucurbit there and there. So these cucurbits are wonderful. At this sort of size and a little bit, maybe up to twice this size, they taste like little cucumbers. And then, when they get, I haven't got any larger ones. Just looking to see if I've got any larger ones. Um, nope, they're all smaller up there. When they get larger, they go a bit hollow and you can cook them like peppers and they add another green flavor. Not cucumbery, but something different to your cooking, which is really nice. I see I have lots of little, um, snails on the things over here oh look there's a slightly larger cucurbit now the cucurbits as i said they are prolific they do like to take over but in that way they're a vine they're an annual vine and they do add a lot of green so not only are they taking over the back here and coming up over here um i had hoped that they would sort of do a flying leap up to this bit over here but it didn't happen so maybe next year a couple of strings up there might help but this lot's coming over here and let me take you around the other side here we go. Can you see them coming through there? Now this is going to be interesting. This, they still got quite a bit of growing to do. So they are coming all through here into the pergola. Well, hello there, Titch. How are you feeling? Are you good? Are you? It's lovely to see you, Titch. Yes, it is. So yes, let's go from the other side because it looks a bit better from the other side. And, probably because that's where the hooks are so what i did was like oh this one isn't on this one's going along the electricity wire but with the other ones there and along there i put some little hooks in place nothing special all it was was a tiny bit of garden wire in a little loop and i just stuck one end of the loop under the plastic and made the other one into a little hook and they're just holding them in place so it's giving them just a little bit of a hold and then they can actually grab hold of along the edge there as well but yeah so they're growing through prolifically oh look there's some lovely oh they're ready to start harvesting and sticking in some salads so they're still solid that one's still solid i can't squeeze that one at all that is still solid so that'll be a nice cucumber that's a nice size for a, a little cucumber isn't that 
And look, whilst we're here, these are my pepper bushes. So there's so many different varieties here, but you'll recognize this is your regular bell pepper here. These are doing well. We have, I think this is Shishito. No, this is Kobachi. This is a Kobachi pepper. You'll have to excuse me. I'm getting used to these. This is the banana pepper here. Just take a step back so you can appreciate what's coming off of that plant. And then under here, we've got, along here, we've got lots of different varieties again. There's a dwarf there. Another bell. Another, wow, look at the size of that. Oh, I'm gonna have to pinch some seeds out of that one. I think that did very well this year. Um, look, craziness. Just look at this. Look at how many peppers are coming off of this plant here. Oh, <laughs> I have two chickens that like laying in this. I don't think I'm gonna get many. Oh, I've got a few peppers coming off of this one, but mainly that's a chicken nesting box. Um, what else have I got on here? We have, oh, uh, this looks like a ram's horn to me. That's not doing bad at all. Oh, look at the size of that one. Again, I'll have to pinch some of these seeds, I think. This is second year round. So these were grown from seeds. This, this bucket here was grown from seeds from last year's peppers. So they're doing really well. Uh, this is Shishito. So there we go. Little crinkly ones, apparently. <laughs> Another banana one here. I um, can't see the label on that one. This will be our habanada. Look, they are just coming through. And these did really well this year, but not so well. Uh, last year, but not so well this year. This is my rainbow. I've got to say this is a bigger one than last year's rainbow, but they were prolific last year. Not so, not so good this year. Uh, what have we got here? We've got Anaheim chili pepper so this is not meant to be too strong a chili so i'm really hoping that it's kind of medium-ish but that's not doing badly there in that chili pepper tree and over here we have another kobachi just crazy look at this isn't it pretty it really is and um probably another dwarf by the looks of it Oh no, that's a mixed spectrum. So that's just odd, I don't know, bell peppery type one. And this one again was uh, one that I grew last year. So I just harvested the, it's only come out with, bless it, it's grown one pepper. It did well, didn't it? It's a good pepper. So yeah, so the way that they are in here is I've got two tables one table there and one table there with with a tray on it you can't really see the tray there we go there's the there's a drip tray and then i've got the buckets there inside all of these were grown in heart um i think i did it in thirds each bucket had some soil in the bottom and then some compost for the next third and then chicken compost. So when I say compost, I mean like bag compost, like potting compost in the next third. And then chicken compost on the top. And then along here, we've got a, a, a bottom low tray here with buckets in it. And then up a bit further, we've got another run of buckets up here. So if I stand back, I'm hoping this year I may have grown enough peppers. <laughs> The idea this year was to grow more peppers and more onions. Well, the peppers are definitely doing fine. The onions, well, they kind of got a bit swamped. They didn't mature as quickly as they should have. I've got some drying off here. There we go on the little rack. But in the garden, I had them planted everywhere. This bed was full of onions. This bed was full of onions all these raised beds around the edges. We've got the perimeter raised beds all the way around. 
and all the way around the perimeter, all the way around the back of that side there as well, and all the way back up to this gate here. They all had onions growing along the edge in the hope that I would get some decent amount of har onion harvest this year. Now, I know some of these are ready to harvest now. This one here looks like it's quite good going. I have a red onion here that looks like it's not too far off, which is good. But there should have been a lot more. And basically, either they disappeared, they just, I don't know, they just literally disappeared. They must have been eaten or something, I guess. Or I've got this left. Now, I did neglect it, remember? So I've just got a little bit of a tuft left there. And again here, I don't know whether the nasturtium just grew too big and took the sun away from the onions, I don't know. And here again. But what I'll do is I'll just leave them in and hopefully they'll come back to life again. I don't know, I've never done it before. Oh, whoa, that's not, not true. Because quite often I leave onions in over the winter. And this is a good example, this corner here was onions left from last year and you can see they weren't doing that well last year but now this one's ready to harvest but a lot of them went to seed so you can see either they went to seed or they kind of collapsed i seem to have a few down here bearing in mind i haven't been in the garden for a long time god knows how this ended up out of the ground um i must have a little mole in here or something i don't know but yeah there's a there's a few out of the ground here maybe a few more worth harvesting i've got an open garden next week and i'm wondering do i do anything with the garden <laughs> do i leave it looking this crazy mess or do i go round and just tidy up everywhere now, if I tidy up everywhere, I'm guaranteed to create a lot of bare soil. And I'm not sure I like bare soil because it just grows more weeds. So I have warned them that I have not touched the garden all summer. And this is what the result of that is. I haven't done any weeding. I've let, like now, the caterpillars are doing all the pruning for me. Um, it's a little bit of craziness, really. Uh, really, it's a lot of craziness. <laughs> but hey-ho. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Should I just leave it? I have said to them, I haven't done anything to the garden. It is a food forest, but um, <laughs> not in the way that a food forest might be designed. Well, it is. It is and it isn't. I literally have not come in here and weeded. I have still got plenty of food. If I want to come in here, I could have a bean feast on the amount of beans I've got here. Look, there you go. Beans there. Underneath the bean plants, we've got a couple of courgette plants. They're producing. We've got a courgette there. We've got down here, we've got another courgette growing down here. So we have got, we've had a few courgettes, not as many courgettes this year, but as I said, all my squash were doing really badly this year. So who knows? So has anyone got a good recipe for beans and courgettes? And I may have some tomatoes coming up, but I'm in no big hurry for that. They can, they can get nice and ripe. Now, in addition to that, we've got this end. I haven't even taken it around this end yet, have I? Let me turn off the water. Right, so up this end, adjacent to the high tunnel, we have the kale, which we had some kale off of this earlier in the year, I have to say, um, but I didn't eat a huge amount of it. This was, we have got some celery growing back there somewhere. This is, this is the celery. So if I wanted some, I think I could find some back there. Um, there, these were cauliflowers. This one shot up and bolted here. And well, yes. Well, I could probably get something out of it still. 
The chard, as always, is my saviour. I could live on chard. So, okay, we need a recipe for beans and chard. Those are my big, big producers. So, in this bed was the kale and the chard along the front, which is doing really well. We had the strawberries running down the middle, which did do very well. They did grow and they did produce more strawberries than I have ever had before. So I'm pleased I moved them to that location. In this far corner here, we have the rhubarb, which I have to say, I didn't go in and harvest anything from. Um, so we do have some still growing in there. I don't, it's not going pink. Does all rhubarb go pink? I don't know. I've not grown rhubarb before and <laughs> the, um, the netting which was meant to be hung up collapsed down clearly and is squashing my um, rhubarb. I didn't plant this brassica here, I don't know what it is, I'm thinking we have had some uh, broccoli growing in this corner before so quite possibly it's broccoli but that has come up from deep within the ground because these beds were all destroyed and rebuilt again but some of the earth was left in but there was no greenery so that's clearly a, a volunteer uh what else did we have in here oh we did we did also have our gojo berries but it doesn't look like the gojo berries decided to do anything much this year we still have yet to have one off of there we have some sunflowers growing again loads of nasturtium um, and these are leek flowers. The leeks were planted along here at the front and they have bolted probably because they didn't get any sun because the, this netting was completely over this and everything was growing in it and, com and compacting everything down. So I think the leek just went, oh, can't cope, we're going to die. Let's throw some seed. So they all bolted for me uh right along this back line this was my heavy shaded area from the apple tree above and we had planted um brussels sprouts that's the brassicas you can see all the way along there the green ones there purple purple green green purple again we've got chard growing along oh, <laughs> along the front there and then we go to lettuce and the lettuce is all bolted. But doesn't it look pretty? I have to say, lettuce bolted. I don't really like the taste of lettuce anyway. The chickens do. But when lettuce bolts, it, it's very pretty, isn't it? The Brussels. Are we going to get Brussels? We've never grown Brussels successfully. I really hoped that moving them to this area would help us grow successful Brussels this year. And I can't see a single Brussel on any of these plants oh hold on what's this what's this are those little baby brussels i see in there we might be lucky on one plant <laughs> oh maybe this one as well so it looks like potentially the green ones may be producing brussels the purple ones do not have any sign of brussels on them oh oh i don't know look what's that is that one just there maybe i just need to be a bit more patient but will my patience and will the plants patient patients live out our little pruners who knows those caterpillars are having a good old go now i knew the press the um i knew that the caterpillars were going to have a go at these and i did not want them to eat them all so i put the nasturtium all the way along here as well but clearly the nasturtium along here have not grown as well as anywhere else which clearly means that they don't like the shade they really do prefer the sun as you can see from all that gold and and orange and red at that end of the garden and the lack of it we've got a little bit here where i'll show you from outside in a minute um, but along here in the shady section, everywhere was planted with exactly the same amount of nasturtium. Nothing's growing along here. So, not so good. I mean, these brassicas are the ones that really need protecting from the caterpillars, from our little pruners. 
and the nasturtium won't grow beside them. Hmm. Well, that was my experiment this year. My other experiment is just to let them munch away. I am not touching them this year and to see whether the reason why our brassicas grow such big outer leaves that we end up throwing away is purely in protection against our little pruners and giving them something to eat um, at the same time as protecting the bit that is valuable to the plant. Anyway, we will see. Now I've just stepped back and realised this dear little thing has fallen off. It was the one and only. It's been growing here all year and it, it's produced and it immediately had flopped to the ground. So I think that's going to have to come into the house. Okay, so looking beyond the broken flower, this is my little pond area. And I have to say, I planted this delicately with a load of little flowers earlier on in the year, and it has totally gone. But we have a bit of colour in here. I mean, look, we have this. We still have... And this is the but the blue is the borage that I was meant to harvest and turn into a um, a, fert a liquid fertilizer. And these are still going. They're not as big and good, but they're still going. So we still have something a little around the pond. This, these are my what's left of my potatoes, and now those leaves have pretty much completely died back. I think they're good to go. I can I could go in there and I could harvest those, but I have harvested six bags already. So we've got enough for the moment. So at the moment, I'm just gonna leave them in there for a while longer. Along here, we have our carrots. Now I haven't even tried to harvest a carrot this year, but if we go in there, look at that. We've got a nice size carrot there. I think this might be a bit successful. I can see a lot of carrot tops. Now, last year's carrots were not successful at all. So I am really looking forward to digging up a few of them to eat. <laughs> so the whole idea with this, with this length here of the, of the fencing, let me stand back. That is our gateway, which we still have failed to find a gate of reasonable cost to be able to hang on it. And the neighbours drive in through here and go in next door and they can see right into here. So the idea was to grow along this fence some tall, bushy, I thought maybe some, some um, carrots, with some peas and some beans behind them, ideally to give me a nice thick growth along here and nope nope i did not successfully grow <laughs> what i had intended to but i did grow a couple of lovely sunflowers over on this end i did plant sunflowers all the way along here as well and not all of them grew so this bed is clearly not as successful as some of the others but it did do well with carrots good great wonderful but look <laughs> the beans decided to grow up my sunflowers I'm getting poured on with the sprinkler again here um, so I've got I've got beans going up my sunflowers instead of all over my fence but never mind oh look we have we have a mushroom not enough for bre Sunday breakfast I don't think um, let's have a look at this bed this end we have got some small onions growing at the bottom here. Might leave them in a little bit longer or harvest them up. I will see. I'll probably harvest them up and then replant any small bulbs. The marigolds did really well. I was really surprised. I didn't know they grew that big though, I have to say. Um, this is the first year that my fennel has gone to seed. So I think it's quite happy. It's either quite happy or really unhappy in that spot. So I've got either side of this gate, I have got fluffy stuff, basically. 
and when I say fluffy stuff <laughs> basically what I mean is I've got asparagus growing on this side here those are that's what your aspar asparagus turns into when you've stopped eating it and on this side I've got fennel with its fluffiness um, that's very scented that's not scented um, I did plant some cucurbits to go up and over the arch and they failed well I say they failed look this is them they're all down here they have decided they're not going to grow up up this trellis they're going to grow everywhere else but and on this side as well and I oh look I've got some sort of bramble there maybe imported in the soil that I brought in um so basically all nasturtium and sunflowers and bolted plants so <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is basically my garden at the moment after a crazy busy summer where I was unable to do any work to it at all and let it completely and utterly run wild. Next year's tips, don't plant so much nasturtium. If anyone has any little children that want to come with little fingers and collect nasturtium seeds, I have thousands of them in the garden free nasturtium seeds to anyone who can collect them uh, yes not so many nasturtium next year tony maybe stick only to tomatoes that are blight resistant that would be another lesson of mine uh, but i think that would be it i think maybe last year I started way too many squash indoors, or the year, was it the year before last? I can't remember. And this year I decided I wouldn't, wouldn't do any inside and I'd do them all out here. And it was a big mistake. I don't know if that's just because of the year that we've had, or maybe it was because I should have started some. So I think next year I'll play it safe and I'll, I'll start some inside again. Anyway. So, I've been a bit sprinkled on and rained on. I'm looking a little bit wet now. But there we go. That is our, our late August garden tour. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to look back on this in years to come to say this was the year of the pepper, hopefully. <laughs> Saying I grew so many peppers this year. It was thoroughly enjoyable crazy lunacy but absolutely wonderful this was the year of the blight this was the year of the slugs oh my god at the beginning of the year the slugs were awful um what else this was the year of the wild vegetable garden where everything was just left to grow on its own and i just came out into the garden whenever I could to harvest whatever food I could find. It literally is the year of foraging for food in my own garden. I do hope you enjoyed my garden video tour.